narrations of the glorious characters and qualities of Lord Ram. What is the merit that he receives? This is there in Srimad Bhagavatam itself. 9-11-23. Purusho Ram Charitam Shravane Rupatharyan Anarsham Syap Paro Rajan Karma Bandher Vimuchite. Shukadev Goswami is telling Parikshit Maharaj that, O oh King Parikshit, Anyone who receives the narrations concerning the characteristics of Lord Ram, Chandra's pastimes, will ultimately be freed from the disease of envy. In this material existence, in this material world, the prime reason for everyone to be in this uh, material world is our original envy. Envy towards Lord and envy towards his creation. So that root of one's material existence can be wiped out. One will be ultimately freed from the disease of envy and thus be liberated from the bondage of fruitive activities. Come down to the perfect. Here in this material world, everyone is envious of someone else, even in religious life. It is sometimes found that if one devotee has advanced in spiritual activities, the other devotees are envious of him. So it is there. We should not forget that we are where? We are in material world. Such envious devotees are not completely free from the bondage of birth and death. As long as one is not completely free from the cause of birth and death, one cannot enter the Sanatan Dharma or the eternal pastimes of the Lord. One becomes envious because of being influenced by the designations of the body. But the liberated devotee has nothing to do with the body and therefore he is completely on the transcendental platform. A devotee is never envious of anyone if he is actually a devotee. If he has come to the uh, transcendental platform, then he is not envious of anyone, even his enemy. Because the devotee knows that the Lord is the supreme protector, he thinks, what harm can the so-called enemy, enemy do? Just the devotee is confident about his protection. The Lord says, Ye yatham tam bajami. According to the proportion of one surrender, and to me I respond accordingly. A devotee must therefore be completely free from envy, especially of other devotees. To envy other devotees is a great offense, a Vaishnava prat. A devotee who constantly engages in hearing and chanting, Shravana Kirtan, is certainly freed from the disease of envy. So one who is able to practice this process of Shravana and Kirtan, what it signifies? It signifies that the envy in the heart is declining, it is coming down. And thus he becomes eligible to go home back to God. So to achieve perfection, what is the most Effective way is to hear the transcendental pastimes of Supreme Law and his manifestation as Lord Ram. So I will move forward now to the second chapter because this is contents of Rama and summarize. I don't want to uh, go through the entire Rama in uh, short, in few verses, but we will go in detail with. So I am moving to the chapter 2nd, which begins by Lord Brahma instructs Valmiki. We see how Valmiki received Ramayana is through the instructions and inspiration of Narad Muni. You remember oh. how Narad Muni appeared and he was questioned by Valmiki. What was the question? Who remembers the question? What question did uh, Valmiki ask so that Nada described about Lord Ram? Who remembers the question? Hmm. 
Only Sonika remembers the question. Why others are not speaking up? Pranav, what was the question? <clears throat> Hare Krishna Prabhuji. Who is the who is currently the perfect personality living in this earth? Who is that personality who possesses all divine qualities? What were the question? What what qualities were asked? What question did he ask? <laughs> yes, Sonika. You share. Audio is not stable, you cannot hear. Ravindra Prabhu, you say, what specific quality or attributes did he inquire? Hare Krishna Prabhuji, am I audible? Yeah, no, it is better. Yeah, Prabhuji, uh, question was um, that uh, who is uh, um, very blissful, who is uh, um, uh, who is all uh, all uh, learned, who is learned of all the Vedic scriptures, uh, who has uh, uh, conquered or um, the anger and having self control over the anger, but whose anger is uh, um, uh, very much. I mean, means so who whose anger can be. Uh, sorry, this was answer. Sorry, uh, this was answer actually. Um, who is knower of all scriptures and uh, uh, who is uh, pleasing for all the creatures? Uh, and yes. uh, who 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 follow all dharma, uh, who never surpasses any uh, uh, Vedic dharma, and who is firm in his vows, who is very truthful, and who is uh, very humble, uh, and Kritagya also. Uh, yes, Kritagya, very good. Yeah. The yes. question was, <laughs> Loke Gunuvan cha Virevan, one who is Gunuvan, and also Viriman, who is most powerful. Dharmagyas, who is the follower of the religious principles, Dharma. And Pitagyascha, Satya Vatka Dridhavrata. Most of it you have covered. So in the second chapter, it begins from that. Naradas to Tadvakyam Shutva Vakya Visharada Ujayama Sudharmatma Tahasisho Mahamuni. So the reply to the question of Valmiki was given by Narad Muni. So having heard the words of Narad Muni, the great sage Valmiki, expert in the usage of words, and a person of dharmika intelligence. Honored them with his disciples. So obviously, Narad Muni is the spiritual master and Valmiki takes the position of a disciple. So he honored. The most merciful Valmiki desired to elaborately describe the activities of Lord Ram. That had been briefly stated. For this is the practice of the learned. Why one should hear is to glorify, is to elaborate, is to expand. Ishtam hi vidusham loke samasya vyasa dharanam. In order to attract the attention of learned readers, the sage desired to reveal the extraordinary characteristics of the author of this work. The extraordinary characteristics of the mode of composition of this work and the extraordinary characteristics of the work itself. In the second chapter, he describes the extraordinary characteristics of the author. So, whose glory will be described now? Valmiki ji. 
Sri Valmiki is supremely trustworthy for he received benedictions to this effect from the grandfather of the universe, Lord Brahma. He now reveals the event that led to Lord Brahma's blessing him. So after he received blessing from Narad Muni, after he received the inspiration for Ramayana, so what he did? Yathavat Pujitastena Devarishir Naradastata Aprishtva Eva Abhyanujita Sajagama Vihayasam Having been properly worshipped by Sri Valmiki. Who was worshipped by Sri Valmiki? Says Narat, Narat having taken his permission to leave and having been granted such permission, the celestial sage Narat then set off to the skies. So after receiving Narat Muni's inspiration and instruction, Narat Muni left. And of course, before leaving, Vyasadev performed what? Vyasa Puja. The Valmiki, sorry. Sorry. Because it's so much inclined to say Vyasadev, it is Valmiki. Valmiki performed the Vyasa Puja. Samuhratam gate tasmin devalokam munistada jagamatam satiram janavyasta avidhurata. When Sri Narad had gone to Brahmalo in a short while, the sage went to the bank of river Tamasa. The word used here is Tada Jagama. Jagama means to went and Tamasa Tiram, the bank of river Tamasa. This Tamasa is an offshoot of Janvaya. Janvaya means Janvi, which is Ganges. Valmiki went on the bank of river Tamasa, not very far from the river Ganga. Murata means the context means a short while. So when Narad Muni had gone to inform Lord Brahma of Valmiki's devotion to Lord Ram. You see how the episode has happened. It is first the mercy of Guru, that is Narad Muni, then the mercy of Brahma Ji follows. So it is Naraji who briefs Brahmaji about Valmiki's devotion to Sri Ram. Valmiki went to the bank of river Tamasa in order to carry out his afternoon bathing duties. So a renunciate or a person in the renounced order, he should bath at least three times. When you will read Chaitanya Charitamit, you will see many times in the afternoon, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to the sea. To take bath. Many times after taking bath, he used to go and meet Haridas Thakur. So, two indicate that Tamasa was distinct from Ganga. So, these two rivers are different. So, where he went, he went to Tamasa to take bath. Satutiram Samasadhya Tamasya Munistada Shishya Mahasthitam Parsve Arriving at the bank of Tamasa, the sage noticed that a sacred spot on the river was mudless and spoke to his disciples standing nearby. Akardama midam tirtham hardvaja nishamaya ramaniyam prasan ambu San Manushyo Manoyatha. So his principal disciple, what is the name of Valmiki Muni's principal disciple is Bhardwaj Muni. So Bhardwaj looked at the sacred spot, which was indicated by Valmiki, that it is mudless, pleasing and with clear water, like the mind of a spiritual mind. 
Bhardwaj in the name of Valmiki's chief disciple, the sage pointed out that particular spot in the water did not have any mud at the bottom. Ordinarily, even if a spot in the water body does not have any mud in the bottom, the water is unclear. Or even if the water is clear, there is mud at the bottom. The tranquil waters were pleasing like the heart of a spiritual man. Or the waters were tranquil like the heart of a spiritualist. Nasyastam kalashatata Diyatmam valkamam mama Idham eva eva dhushe Tamasati tamuttamam so Valmiki Muni told Bhardwaj, my child put down the water pot. What does the sannyasi have? He has two things. What are the two things that he carries? One is the water pot. And what is the second thing? Kamandalu. Water pot is Kamandalu. Danda and Kamandalu. Yeah. Nyasastam means place the water pot on the ground. I will bathe right here, the best sacred spot on Tamasa. So it is said that why he wanted to bathe in Tamasa when Ganges was near? The answer is that because it was getting late for the sage to carry out his afternoon duties, he decided to bathe in that very spot of the Tamsa instead of going to the Ganga. And Bhadwa should also bathe in the same spot. Eva Mukto Bhardavajo Valmikena Mahatmana Praya Chatta Munistasya Valkalam Niyato Guru Upon being instructed thus by the great-minded Valmiki, Bhardavaj, obedient to his spiritual master, gave the sage his bark. Bark, you know, the sages, they wear the bark. Sashishya hastad adhya valkalam niyata indriya vichachara hapashyamas tad sarvato vipulam vanam <clears throat> Surprisingly, of controlled sensel, after receiving the bark from his disciple's hand, the sage Valmiki looked at the extensive forest all around and began to think. Tasya bhayase tu mithunam charantam anapainam tadarsha bhagavam statra so what he saw that the river was completely surrounded by the forest. And <clears throat> what he saw in the forest, the great sage saw there near the sacred spot an inseparable couple of croncha birds. This is very unique. Kroncha birds. Pair of bird means there was one male and one female kroncha bird. Cooling, queen. They were, you know, speaking or they were calling out in lovely melodious notes. Here, he is being referred as Bhagwan. Who is referred as Bhagwan? Valmiki. Bhagwan indicates here that sage Valmiki possesses greatness. He possessed the capacity to curse or bless. He noticed the Kroncha bird couple near the sacred spot where he was bathing. And they were inseparable. It is well known that the Kroncha bird couples cannot be separated for even a moment. Charu Nisevanam indicates that they were cooing melodiously at the time of mating. This is what he saw. Somehow by the arrangement of the providence by the superior authority, this episode happened. Tasmatu mithunat ekam 
उमांसम पाप निश्चय जगन्न वैरो नीलायो निषाद पश्यत Even while the the sage was watching, what was the sage watching, the sage was watching, what was uh, inseparable closeness of the croncha birds, and he was also hearing their melodious queen. So at the same time, what he saw, even the sage was watching a hunter, certainly sinful, and an abode of enmity, killed one of the croncha bird couple, the male bird. So he was just observing that. couple of the croncha bird at the same time what he saw that an arrow came and it shot it struck the male bird and the male bird fell down the hunter was certainly sinful he was so cruel that he killed one of the bird even while they were mating he was vaira nilaya and dot with natural enmity towards all creatures ताम सोनिता परितांगम वेष्टमानम महितले भार्यातु निहितम दृष्टवा रुरवा कारुनम गिरम सींग द मेल बर्ड शॉट बाय द हंटर एंड सो रोलिंग ऑन द ग्राउंड विद ब्लड ऑल ओवर इट्स बॉडी इट्स वाइफ द फीमेल कॉन्शा बर्ड इट क्राइड पीचियस डिजायर धार्मिक तथा करुणा वेदित्व अधर्मोयमिक एक्ट ऑफ दंटर एंड द क्राइंग फीमेल क्रॉन्स बर्ड बिकॉज शी वॉज दस दब्जेक्ट ऑफ इज कॉम्पैशन ही अटर द फॉलोइंग वर्ड The toys board sage was naturally filled with compassion. When he noticed the crying female croncha bird, she became his object of compassion. The sage also knew that killing an animal at the time of mating is a dharma. So see what comes out from the heart of the compassionate Valmiki. Manisha pratishtat tam. जॉयमेंट फॉर अनलिमिटेड इयर्स टू कम So, in fact, a curse came out from the heart of Sage Valmiki. Pratishtitam tvam agama sashvati sama. That you will never attain a fixed position for enjoyment for unlimited years to come. Why? Yad kroncha mithunat ekam. For you have killed one of the kroncha bird couple. that was absorbed in this pot of mate this was shri valmiki's curse upon the hunter the first line can also be split as follows manishat pratishtitam 
Twam Ama Gamma Sashvati Sama. Here Ama would mean, O oh, inefficient one, referring to the hunter. The meaning of the line would be then, O oh, inauspicious hunter, you may never attain a fixed position for enjoyment for an unlimited year, number of years. So the first verse uttered by Valmiki by the mercy of the 400 Brahma. What is Brahma's mercy? In this verse, there is Brahma's mercy. This is the root of Ramayana. Please hear very attentively. No one will tell you this. You will hardly hear this. This is the verse which gave inspiration in the heart of Valmiki to describe Lord Ram's Ramayana. And how this verse was uttered by Lord Brahma's mercy. So it will be obviously it will become obvious later in this chapter that this first verse uttered by Valmiki by the mercy of the poor Brahma, the previous Acharya asserts that as such, it cannot merely be a verse expressing a curse. The impossible for a sage to curse. And that also an invocation of auspiciousness and glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, another meaning of this verse is as follows. Nishad can also mean residence. Ma can also refer to Lakshmi, the Goddess of Fortune. Ma Nishad would be one word meaning O oh, residence of the goddess of fortune. The remaining line would then yield this meaning. May you attain glory for an unlimited number of years for all time. So in this way, this curse happens to be uttered from the lips of Valmiki. So then what happens is Tasevam bhuvatas chinta babhuva vidi vikshata shoka trena ste shok shokune imidam viharitam maya. So Valmiki started to deliberate, deeply think. While watching the Kronshla couple and while uttering the previous verse, a thought appeared in the heart of the sage. Oh, what did I, distressed by the lamentation of this word, utter? The sage asked himself, what sort of statement did I make? The thoughtful men, they should, whatever they speak, they think about it. Chintayansa mahapragyas chakra Mati manamatim shishyam cheva abravivatyam idam samuni pungava. The greatly intelligent knower of the scriptures, the best of the sage Valmiki, thinking to himself, came to a conclusion and spoke to his disciple the following words. So, Valmiki is not an ordinary person, he has received enlightenment from none other than Narad Muni. So he is Mahapragna. He is widely intelligent. A person who has great intelligence. Or one who clearly knows about things and one is capable of augmentation and counter-argumentation. Padabaddho sharasamas tatrilaya samanvita Shokartasya pravito me shloka bhavatu na anyatha. So he is deliberating, he is thinking, he is giving a thought to it that when I was saddened by the distress, what was the distress when he saw the male bird, Prancha bird being killed? Remember this word, Prancha bird, Prancha. K R a U N C H A, Roncha. So he was saddened by distress with four quarters, each with the equal number of syllables, and capable of being sung to string musical accompaniment with a rhythmic tempo we know as shloka and nothing else. When Sri Valmiki was distressed by the lamentation of the female Roncha bird, 
he had uttered a word, a shloka, that could be sung. So this verse that he composed out of distress was not an ordinary verse. It had the perfect composition in a very melodious and rhythmic meter. So he uttered a verse, a shloka that could be sung to the accompaniment of the veena, another musical instrument. Shishya stutasya bhuvato munir vakyam anuttamam prati jagraha samarishtas tasya tushto bhavet guru. When the sage uttered this super excellent verse, his delighted disciple memorized it. Who is the disciple? Delighted disciple. Memorized. Once he heard from the lips of his spiritual master, he memorized it. The spiritual master in Valmiki became happy with him. So Abhishekam Tathakritva Tirthe Tasmin Yathavidi Tameva Chintayanartham Upavratata Vamuni then after taking his bath at that sacred spot, according to the scriptural rule, the sage turned towards his ashram while thinking about that very event. He was contemplating about his involuntary utterance of the shloka and he then turned towards his ashram. Bhardavajasya tatha shishyo vinita shutvan muni Kalasham Puranam Adya Prahishtato Anujagamaha. Then Bhardwaj, his humble, learned, and sagacious disciple, taking the pot filled with water, followed him. So the commentary says that Shutvan here for Bhardwaj, which is read that Bhardwajas Tathashishyo Vinita, he is humble. Shutvan. And Muni, these are the qualities. So, Shutuvan indicates that Bhardwaj was learned in the scripture and filled with understanding. He had grasped the meaning of Guru Shloka. He followed the stage, that is, he didn't lag behind. Sa Pravishya Ashrama Padam Srishena Sahadharma Ved Upavrishta Pratashanyas Chakara Dhanyam Asthita. Sage Valmiki, the knower of Vedic Dharma, entered his ashram with his disciple, sat down comfortably, and spoke on other topics while absorbed in contemplation. So the qualities are mentioned here. Please hear very attentively. Don't take it you know, very lightly, otherwise, you will miss the point. It is very, very important. That is why it is being mentioned here. Otherwise, it won't be there. This is how the uh, inspiration and the formation of Ramayan begins. So the qualities mentioned are Dharma Ved indicate that after entering his ashram, the sage knew the duties of the Vedic Dharma, including the duty of worshipping the Supreme Lord. He was contemplating on the shloka that he had involuntarily uttered. So he was again and again, his thought, his mind, his intelligence was drawn again and again on that verse that was accidentally uttered from his lips. He spoke on other topics and he explained the Puranas. Ajagamo tata brahma loka karta swayam prabhu chatur mukho mahateja drashtum tam muni pungavam Then the four-faced Lord Brahma of great prowess, the creator of the three worlds, personally came to see Valmiki, the best of sages. This is very important. After Narad Muni left and Narad Muni reported to Brahmaji about the sage Valmiki and this incident happened that he went to take bath and when he was about to take bath, he saw the Kroncha bird meeting and in their due course of mating before they could mate, one male bird was killed and while the male bird was killed, a curse, a curse verse appeared from the uh, lips of Valmiki. And that verse is not an ordinary verse. That is a very, very poetic 
composition. <coughs> and while deliberating, thinking again and again about that verse, then Valmiki, when he returns to his ashram, there is another very distinguished guest. Whom he receives, he receives Lord Brahma. The creator of the three words personally came to see Valmiki the best of cities. Lord Brahma was Prabhu. The master, he possessed four heads useful for uttering the four Vedas. Why Brahmaji has four heads? Answer is so that he can utter or he can recite the four Vedas. Valmiki is described here as Muni Pangava for his glory has been recounted by Narad to Brahma. Why Brahmaji came? Because Narad Muni spoke about Valmiki. <clears throat> Who out of curiosity personally came to see Valmiki, even though he could have ordered the compilation of Ramayan from his own abode. Out of extreme respect for the sage, he came to see him personally. You see how much effort is there. Who all is there behind the scene for Ramayan to manifest? First, what we saw? We saw the conversation between sage Valmiki and Narad Muni. And after Narad Muni went, he reported to Brahmaji and now Brahmaji has appeared. So what happens next is Valmiki Rathakam Drishtvas Sahashodhaya Vagvata Pranjale Prayato Bhutva Tathastu Parama Vishmita Then Valmiki noticing him, noticing who? Brahmaji. He stood up immediately with his word and mind under control. With great astonishment, he stood up with his palm joined together in supplication. Pujiyas astam devam padya agraya asana vandane. So, how he welcomed very beautifully. First, by worship, pujiyam astam devam. Then, padya. Asana. Padya means washing the lotus feet. Argya means uh, that giving him a proper place for sitting. And then Vandane, offering various respectful hymns. Pranamya, offering obeisances. Vidhikva, uh, Vidhikva means as per the Etiquette or as per the spiritual injunctions. Enam Prishva Anamayam Avyayam. Having offered Lord Brahma obeisances as per spiritual injunctions and having inquired about his constant welfare, Sri Balmiki worshipped him by offering him water for washing his feet. There are two things when you will go to the deity worship in the proper way. So there is first, there is Padyam and then there is Argyam. When we offer prasadam or when we offer bhoga to Krishna in the, in the altar, it is not the way that you do right now. It is very elaborate. So first you have to invite the Lord to come. And then there is Padyam. You have to wash his lotus feet. Very beautiful it is. Then you have to give him Argyam. Then you have to wash his lotus hand. Then you have to give him the proper place of sitting. Asana. And then you do with mantras. There are many mantras. Then you, you know, invite the Lord to accept the offering that you have prepared through the disciplic succession. Through the Guru Parapra. It is very, very intimate. Uh, it gives very intimate feeling with the Lord when you do it in a proper way. In COVID days, because the pujaris were not well. So in that two months I was given the service. And I was given the service in Lord Ram's altar only. Every time it happened that my offering was in Lord Ram's altar. So this is how one should receive a spiritual personality. Very beautiful description here in Ramayana. He offered obeisances as per scripture injunctions. He worshipped him by offering him water for washing his feet. That is called Padyam. Then Argyam, Asana. In this way, and then with prayers. 
vandane his prayers the sage valmiki offered brahma obeisances with the eighth part of his body what is that ashtang ashtang uh, pranam as described by the authorities Atopavishyasya Bhagavan Asane Paramachyarite Valmike Maharishe Sandidesha Asanam Tatha Brahmana Samana Yujata Sapi Pavashed Asane The Lord Brahma sat down on the most excellent worship sheet and ordered the great sage Valmiki to sit down. Then being ordered by Lord Brahma, Sri Valmiki also sat down on his seat. This hardly you would have ever heard that how this Ramayana came about. The so Lord Brahma personally came and you will see how things will unfold. Valmiki offered Brahma a seat that has been worshipped for his usage. He sat down below Brahma as appropriate. Lord Brahma requested the sage to sit down in order to compose a poem for the welfare of the whole world. Upavishta tadatasmin saksha loka pitamahe tadgate neva manasa valmiki dhyana masita. Even after Lord Brahma, the grandfather of the world. What is the word used here is Pitamaha. Upavishta Tadatas. Upavishta means to sit. After he was seated, who Sakshat Loka Pitamaha. One who is the grandfather of the world. He personally sat down in front of him. Valmiki make, became absorbed in thoughts of the violent death of the Kroncha bird in the mind. So this episode has had such a deep impact. Although he's such a renounced sage, he has nothing to do with all what this is. things keep happening. This is nature's arrangement. But he was so much deeply absorbed in that thought even after Lord Brahma came. Papatmana Kutam Kashnam Vairagrahan Buddhina an abominable act has been committed by that personification of sin. His intelligence fixed on taking that bird violently, a hunter who for no reason could kill a croncha bird singing in melodious notes while hankering to mate with his companion. Just two more verses I'll tell. Overcome by distress over the death of the male croncha bird and still lamenting about the female croncha bird, he again sang the shloka beginning with Manishat to himself. Lord Brahma is there. But still in his heart, this episode is uh, reviewing and repeating. Tamuvacha tato brahma prahasan munipangava shlokeva tvayobadha Natra Karya Vicharana. Then Brahma smilingly told the best of the sages, You have indeed composed a shloka. Do not worry. The very fact that even in the presence of Lord Brahma, the spiritual master of the universe, the self disciplined Valmiki's mind recited that verse beginning Mahajita indicates that it was happening by the desire of Lord Brahma. After hearing that verse recited by the sage within his mind, Lord Brahma spoke to him the best of sages. Sri Brahma was smiling that the sage was unaware that the shloka has appeared upon his tongue by Brahma's own arrangement. So this is the secret. Machandad evata brahman pravartena saraswati Ramasya Charitam Krishnam Purutvam Rishi Sattama. So the order and the instruction flows here. So what Brahmaji says, O Brahmana, 
this verse appear to you simply by my desire. O best of the sages, describe all the activities of Lord Ra. This is the instruction. And this is the empowerment. Who gave the instruction and the empowerment? Lord Brahma himself. Lord Brahma clarified that the best of sages, Valmiki, had uttered a verse and was astonished about it. Valmiki had received the potency to compose poetry, but only a true sage can compose true poetry. So the implication is what Brahma said compose a book on Lord Rama's activity in shloka like this. Dharmatmano Gunavato Loke Ramasya Dhimata Pritam Katha Dhirasya Yatate Naratam Chutum. Very, very beautiful. What he says, what is the instruction of Brahmaji? Now he gives the detail how he has to do. Firstly, he has said that you have to describe all the activities of Lord Ram. But not independently or not whimsically. Now he is saying that in accordance with what you have heard from Narada. Vritam Krathaya Dhirasya Yathate Narada Shrutam Yatha Shruti Tathamati We heard that in Srimad Bhagavatam. How Sutta Goswami is expressing? He is expressing to as he has heard from whom? From his spiritual master, Shukadev Goswami. So, same parampara system is being told here. In accordance with what you have heard from Narad Muni, describe the activities of Sri Ram, who adheres to Vedic Dharma, possessing several auspicious qualities in the world, and who is learned and sober. Having given a general order to him to compose a book on Lord Ram activity, then he orders him how to compose it. Ram, the chief hero of this poem, is described here with four objectives. So what are the four objectives of Rama in here? First is the Dharmatmana. Lord Ram's foremost quality, that who adheres to Vedic Dharma. Loke Gunavata. Possessing several auspicious qualities in the world. Those details we heard what Narad Muni said. And then he is Dhimata. <clears throat> where you hear the word dhimata, tava shishena dhimata. Anyone remembers where this verse is in Bhagavad Gita? In the first chapter. <clears throat> you see, there, Duryodhan is speaking to Dronacharya. Tava shishena dhimata. But actual dhimata is Lord Ram and dhirasya. Dhirasya means one who is extremely patient or sober. It is known that a poem becomes famous by the description of the quality of a hero. Please hear this very attentively. In this regard, Bhoja said that even a slight outpouring of a poet would decorate the ear of the learner if it describes the hero who is supreme in the world by his qualities. Such a hero would have qualities such as being born in a noble family, brilliant, very fortunate, liberal, powerful, skilled, and adhering to very dharma. Dharmatmana indicates that Lord Ramachandra adheres to Vedic dharma. The very word Ramasya indicates that he is both powerful and brilliant. Dhimata indicates that he is scholarly. Dhirasya indicates that he possesses great fortune as the emperor of the entire world. Lok Gunavata indicates that he is liberal and possesses other qualities of a hero. The sage Valmiki, so in a way he is giving the uh, subject matter also. What he has to do. See? What he said first, that you have to uh, explain or you have to express in line with what you heard from Narad Muni. And then he is also saying where you have to focus. So, Valmiki should compose a literature about the activities of Lord Ram for he possesses such qualities. The word Vritam here means activities. With the qualities and the activities. Janma and Karma. Both. Describe as you heard from Narada indicate that she Valmiki should briefly describe Lord Ram's first time. 
and who is the original composer of Lord Ramayana? Now I may ask this question. There we will conclude. Who is the original composer of Ramayana? We discussed that. Only Sonika is hearing with heart. Others are still somewhere else. Of course. Yes, Devadatta. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Lord Brahma. Yes, Lord Brahma himself. And what is the uh, length of his composition? If I may ask this question also. One billion slokas. Yeah, one lakh crore. I don't know if it comes to one billion. Uh, from me, my side it came one billion, but later I saw it is written one lakh crore. Who is good at mathematics can find out. Ravinder Prabhu? You find out 1 lakh crore and 1 billion. Is it the same or is it different? So the original composer, that is Lord Brahma, he has empowered Valmiki. How? Because it was the recommendation of Narabhi. To see how empowerment comes. Or how one performs such extraordinary uh, activity. So first he received the mercy of Narad Muni and from Narad Muni's recommendation, Brahmaji himself comes and he orders Valmiki Muni to compose Ramayana and glorify Lord Ram. Okay, so I'll stop here. We remember tomorrow is Ram Nomi, the appearance day of Lord Ram. Yesterday, we uh, recited some of the verses in glorification of Lord Ram. Muno Ram Prabhu sent a write-up also on that. So try to uh, memorize that and try to understand the meaning and try to enter into the feelings of the composition. See how the composition comes. It comes from the heart. It's not an ordinary composition. It is empowered by the Guru Parampara. All those verses are from Ramayana. Some of the verses which very much attracted me. Some of my empowerment of one devotee is mercy. I was forced to study Ramayana two years back. And then the desire came to study Ramayana. So in between I have studied Ramayana but not systematically like now I'm trying to do because there was the pressure of you know <laughs> giving classes so I could not go in such details so now is the opportunity so we will continue so please recite from your heart those very beautiful compositions of Ramayana in glorification how you have seen Padyam, Argyam, Asana and Vandai Vandanam so Vandanam is the Glorification of the God. So try as far as possible. Okay. So I'll stop here. If you have not memorized, then please write it. Write it and when you come in front of Lord Ram tomorrow, so please recite it. Hare Krishna. You will feel, you will feel, it will be so uplifting. Hare Krishna. Yes, Sonika? Mm -hmm. Mr. Prabhuji, in first class, you have mentioned that it was 100 uh, crore slokas. Today, you mentioned uh, 1 lakh crore slokas. Pra so Prabhuji, what, is uh, here, what is written here is 1 lakh crore. What is written here by Vidwan Gorang Prabhu is 1 lakh crore. Okay, Prabhuji. Calculate 1 lakh crore is 1 billion or it is even more. I don't know. I mean, it is Prabhuji, unlimited. It is unlimited. What the point uh, we are trying to make it is so extensive. It is so elaborate. The glories of Lord Ram is Ananta. Okay. Now, how does it matter to us? If it is 1 lakh versus, can we study? If it is 10 lakh versus, can still be study? <laughs> if it is even more, uh, what is our possibility? If we can study this 24,000 words, it will be one of the greatest blessings. It will be the greatest blessing. And what is the purpose of studying of Ramacharitam? 
why we are studying this at the beginning i said what the blessing we want to receive the blessing which is bestowed by sukadev goswami he says purusho ram charitam shamane ra upadhareya so at last let us have the first line applied in our life that anyone who orally received the narration concerning the characteristics of lord ram since past time then what he says can come true that one can be freed from the disease of envy and thus be liberated from the bondage of fruity vibrations what a great blessing can there be any blessing uh, more beneficial than this nothing else so let us i this is very you know big blessing that we will be going to ayodhya so let us have our heart inclined to reach ayodhya how by hearing the glorious characteristics and activities of lord ram so if you are all willing i will continue okay hari krishna and wish you all a very auspicious ramanami jai shri ram